Hi there folks, welcome back to my den. Today I'm just doing a test on this charcoal I've got. It's a South African black wattle. It's imported and as an invasive species it's a good idea to to use it for charcoal because it just keep, keeps a, the, popul the tree population down. All right, so I'm gonna pour some out, have a look at it and then I'll get some going. Tonight we're making burgers and Tomorrow we're probably going to use it again on a rotisserie. So now that I've said that, I suppose we're going to have to. Okay, see you just now. So pour them out. A few small bits. Generally, it's looking good. I think we'll be fine. It's still my my middle size charcoal starter. I'm just making some burgers tonight, so that'll be enough for that. I'll get it going and then see how it goes. So let's get our chimney starter going. We leave that now about 15 minutes or so and then it should be ready. This windbreak, I use it a lot if, the, if it's really windy just to stop it from blowing too much on the bottom and not, not letting the, the air come upwards so it just makes a difference. This windbreak helps a lot when it's really windy. It just gets it burning quicker. Okay, so it's time now to get the charcoal into the bottom. I just brought my burgers out. They're bur Burrowos burgers, which is our South African sausage that we make. It's what's left in the sausage maker after making the, the sausage. So I just make them into patties. This lot, I have actually put some Stetson Burger Mix on. You can see the white stuff there. That Stetson Burger Mix. I normally would mix it in with the mince, but because these were already made made patties, I just shoved it on today. Right, so let's get this wind deflector off. Then we need to take out the grate. your things set up beforehand I forgot this time so we're only going to be using one today we're going to be using the Weber griddle today so we only need the need to use the one just get that all back in there that's let's say this GBS grate system works so well you take the inside out and you put this in. I've also got the sear grate which goes in there. You've then obviously got the normal normal grate that goes goes on as well. So and there's all sorts. There's also um, a wok to, to go that, that can go on and there's also a waffle maker. There's all sorts of things that go on and interchangeable between all of the charcoal barbecues and the gas barbecues right so that's now needs to get some some oil onto it there we'll give it a, a bit of a paint on there that needs to get nice and hot before we can put our food on we'll close it up the, the vent is open the bottom vent is open, it'll heat up nicely and then we'll come and cook. Before we carry on any further, I just want to show you how the charcoal is looking. You know, it's, it really is looking good from there. So let's just carry on. 
Mm, getting nice and hot. 250 degrees C. So into Fahrenheit. Five thirty three Fahrenheit. That's good. Smoking. I'm going to start cooking. Righty ho, goes up. We'll come back in a few minutes. Time to turn them on ink. Don't want to overcook them. No, not, not quite ready yet. Most of the heat to this side, so I forgot that I was only using the one. I've actually made the most delicious, made the most delicious burger buns earlier on. First time I made them, and they really are nice. Something else we've got is our little Inkbird Temperature Pro, but it's a new one. It's waterproof. It's, you take the, the cap off here with a little screw and you charge it via your USB and it's got a clever unit inside that whatever angle you hold it at, you can read it, it keeps changing. There's automatic switch off. Once you put it down, as soon as you pick it up and it feels that vibration, it switches on again. So let's check the temperatures now. 58, 57, 54, 67, 59. So they're basically almost done. Let's give them a little turn. I'm to just check what temperature the by the base is at now. Ah, so holding tinta nicely. So it's 426 there. So yeah, that's good. The charcoal's holding tinta really well. Now I've only got that little bit in the middle, so it's going well. This temperature gun, the Inkbird Plus, made by Inkbird, it really is nice. It's quite quite bulky and it's very accurate and it's got quite a long temperature range and the distance that it all can work at. So I'm very pleased with it. It's one and another thing I've got from, from Inkbird. I get a lot of stuff from them. A lot of my stuff is Inkbird. And yeah, no, it's working well. I think it must be ready now. We we'll carry on cooking because it's at 69, 70. Oh, these are done. These are done. Thank you. All perfect. I was going to take us inside, but. They're going to carry on cooking too long, so I'll take them off. Gorgeous, looking good. So, our charcoal, that's still good. So loads there, so we'll just switch it all off, close it up. We'll come back tomorrow and reuse what's left there and add some more because we're going to be using a different with a kettle tomorrow with a rotisserie. So see you again tomorrow.
Right, so here's phase two of the charcoal testing. I've just set to light the little lighter cubes at the bottom. Got a full chimney of the charcoal and let's see how it goes. Very nice charcoal. Some quite nice big pieces, not a lot of small stuff. So yeah, it's nice. I'm just setting up the rotisserie, the rotisserie beef tonight, and be a good test for the for the new charcoal. I'm very impressed with this that there's no sparkles. Quite often with charcoal, with lump wood charcoal, you get a lot of sparkling from the top. But this has been very good. I don't want to go too close because it's quite hot. It's nearly all going there's probably three quarters of the way into burning nicely so i'm going to pour this in now and then there'll be some unburnt in there which will just keep it going a bit longer we're about to get the charcoal on in the meantime just ex please excuse the noise of the the fans running in the background there's quite a few extractor fans running from my biltong shed because i've got a full consignment of biltong in there Right, so let's get the charcoal on. Looking good. Remembered my gloves today. I've got a few different sets. I always seem to forget them. And a little chunk of wood in today a little bit of smoke that's all not too much then we get our grate on our rotisserie ring and we'll close it up leave it for about 10 10 15 minutes to heat up and then we'll put the meat on Time to put the meat on. There's a nice piece of salmon cut, salmon cut roast, which comes off the side of the biltong meat, the silver side. This is on the one, one side of it. And it was really nice and fatty. So I said to my butcher, please, I will have that and take it home for a roast. It's been marinating with spogs, which is salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and some spices. Been marinating in that for a couple of days. And now it's cook time. Just put my, my meter probe, my temperature probe in there and fire it up. I've just got to get a addition in the, the bottom there, a little bit of water pan, and then it'll be ready to just keep going and going and going for the next hour and a half or so. So as this is not really about the cook, it's about the charcoal. It's looking good so far. I'll uh, we'll let it go, keep going. Well, this charcoal is really burning hot. I haven't got the vent open very much at the bottom. And it's shot way up onto 500 Fahrenheit. Uh, what's that? 250, 260, about 260 or so centigrade. Um, yeah, it's it's burning very hot, so I've had to shut it down a bit. This has had an hour now, and I've had to shut the bottom vent right down, and the top vent just about all the way closed as well. It was just running so hot. I had to put the foil on so I can take it off now, just to brown it a little bit on the outside. But these charcoals have worked really hot. I don't normally do roast or whatever with charcoal. I always use briquettes, but these have been hot, been nice, been very good. It's been about an hour, 10 minutes. I moved some of the charcoal from the right hand side into the left hand side just to build up a bit of flame, a bit of peat because this one on this side had gone out. So 
I had because I had clo closed the vents off so much because it was so hot that sort of went out so yeah now all in all it was very very hot and very pleased so that's it folks thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel like the videos it really does help push our ratings up on on YouTube not that I'm using it commercially but it's just nice to get more views and that sort of thing okay so until next time thanks a lot bye